Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into something that's got me pretty excited. Monster Hunter Wilds. Capcom has been teasing us with some stuff as of recently and with the latest trailer, I thought it'd be a good time to dive deep into everything we know about the game so far. There's a lot, so let's get started. So Capcom is calling this the pinnacle of hunting action gameplay. And honestly, from everything I've seen so far, I don't think that's an overstatement. The game's set for release sometime in 2025, and it's shaping up to be the biggest and most ambitious Monster Hunter game. I mean, we're talking about massive new locales, some crazy looking monsters, and a whole lot of new features that are going to make this game stand out, even in a series that's known for its high standards. Now, if you haven't seen the latest trailer, we're introduced to a new locale, the Scarlet Forest. The location itself contains towering trees, a lush environment, and is just again, another gorgeous zone. But there's this weird, almost eerie, red colored water all over the forest floor. It's like stepping into a dark fantasy world, and honestly, I can't wait to explore it. It's definitely my vibes. We see a new monster in the Scarlet Forest, La La Barina. This thing is pretty much a spider, and it's definitely a hunt I'm looking forward to. I don't know what it is, man. But massive spider monsters are just really cool to me. I've been playing a lot of Wukong recently, and the spiders in that game are just incredibly fun, and those fights are incredibly fun as well. I think it's probably just that Lovecraft feeling massive spiders give me. I'm here for it. The trailer also gives us a peek at Ray Dow, the apex predator of the Windward Plains. This monster loves the lightning storms, making it not just a visual spectacle, but also looks to be a pretty tough monster with some electrifying attacks. Moving on to the mounts, the secret, which is your mount in this game, is more than just a way to get around. It's got this insane agility and you can pretty much do anything while riding it. Use items, gather materials with the hook slinger, even switch weapons mid fight. The hook slinger is going to be super handy for gathering materials from a distance or triggering traps. You can also auto travel on this mount. Essentially, you just click somewhere on the map and your mount will just take you there. You don't have to do anything. So. Let's say you want to go start a hunt. Well, while on the way to the hunt, because the mount is taking you there automatically, you can spend your time preparing for the hunt. It's like they've taken all the little things that could slow down a hunt and just streamlined the whole process, trying to keep you always in the action, which I can appreciate. All right, let's dive into some of the monsters because let's be real, <laughs> that's what we're all here for. First up, we've got Dashaguma. This guy's a bear-like creature. He's territorial, rugged, and has this aggressive nature. Then there's Chatacabra, pretty much a frog on steroids with a juicy, juiced up tongue. It uses its saliva to stick stones to its forelimbs to power up its attacks. Yeah, you heard that right. It's a frog that can power up its punches. And finally, we've got Balahara, a desert dwelling Leviathan that's all about using the sand to its advantage. It can create quicksand traps, which is going to add a whole new layer of strategy and depth to those desert hunts. But it's not just the monsters that are getting an upgrade, the ecosystems in Monster Hunter Wilds are more alive and reactive. The Windward Plains, for example, has everything from sandy deserts to lush grasslands, and the monsters here are perfectly adapted to their environments. Ray Dow, the apex predator we talked about earlier, is a perfect example. It's not just a monster, it's a part of the ecosystem thriving in the lightning storms that sweep through the plains. And then there's the Scarlet Forest, which again is a place that's literally wild. The red water, the dense foliage, and the new monsters like La Barina all contribute to the sense of a living, breathing world that's full of surprises. Whether it's the environment affecting the monsters, like lightning scaring them off, or smaller monsters working in packs to take down larger prey, everything in this game feels interconnected. It's not just about hunting, it's about surviving in a world that's as dangerous as it is beautiful. Now let's get into the nitty gritty, the hunting mechanics. If you're a fan of the series, you'll be happy to know that all 14 iconic weapon types are making a comeback. We're talking about everything from the great sword to the insect glaive, with each weapon having new moves and features. Focus mode is a big new addition that lets you aim your attacks and pinpoint monster weaknesses. It's going to make those critical hits even more satisfying. Plus, there are new mechanics like offset attacks, which is when your attack clashes with a monster's attack at the same time while using certain weapon types. This attack will send the monster reeling, allowing you to follow up with a unique attack. Another new mechanic is the power clashes. These occur when guarding against certain monster attacks, challenging you to push the monster back, and if you succeed, you stagger the monster, in which you can then close in for a powerful follow-up attack. These add layers of depth to the combat, and it's all about giving you more options and making the hunts feel more intense and rewarding. And if things do get too tough, 
you can always send out an SOS flare. This feature lets you call in up to three other hunters to join you, and if no one's available, the game will automatically send in NPC support hunters. So whether you're playing solo or in multiplayer, you're never really alone. It's all about keeping the action going and making sure you're always in the thick of it, which again, I can appreciate. Another cool addition is the expedition system. These are like open world missions where you can set your own objectives and explore the world at your own pace. And with the new pop-up camps, you've got even more flexibility. These camps let you manage your gear, fast travel, and start new quests without having to go back to town. There's also a portable barbecue grill, so you can cook up a meal at any time. This meal will not only raise your maximum stamina, but also restores both your health and stamina. It's again, all about keeping the momentum going so you can focus on what really matters, taking down those massive monsters. So some people were able to get their hands on this game early and play a quick demo, and everything I've been seeing online from these people have been overwhelmingly positive. They basically got to go on a few hunts in the Windward Plains and fight monsters like Dashaguma, Ray Dao, and Chatacabra. People who got their hands on the demo at Gamescom and Summer Games Fest are saying that the game feels incredibly smooth and polished, the controls are fluid, the environments are stunning, and the new features like the secret mount and focus mode are getting a lot of praise. There were some minor performance issues noted, but that's pretty normal for an early build. Overall, it sounds like Monster Hunter Wilds is living up to the hype, and then some. All in all, Monster Hunter Wilds is shaping up to be a must play for me, and really anyone who loves action games, especially if you're a fan of the series. The scale of the environments, the depth of the combat, and the way the game world reacts to everything you do, all of it points to this being the most ambitious Monster Hunter game yet. The world looks to be incredibly lively, Capcom is really pushing the boundaries with this one, and I, for one, am incredibly excited to see more as we get closer to that 2025 release date. Do you guys think we will get a demo for this game similar to Worlds? When do you all think Wilds will come out? Let me know in the comments below. I don't know about you all, but I'm itching to jump into Monster Hunter World to tide myself over until Wilds drops. I've never played it, so please leave comments and suggestions down below. Should I just get the base game or should I get the Iceborne edition? I've heard great things about Iceborne, so I'll probably just end up doing that. What weapons would you all recommend? I like to move fast, so the dual blades got my attention so far. And as always, take excellent care of yourselves, call your mother or someone you love, and goodbye.